Greetings and welcome to online lecture series of fluid mechanics. Uh, now we are starting unit number five. <clears throat> unit number five, uh, uh, actually there are two topics uh, in unit number five, internal flow and external flow. This session we are going to discuss flow through pipe uh, major losses uh, that is related to the internal flow. So first we start the internal flow. Internal flow, uh, already the name itself has a meaning. Uh, the flow through closed conduit is called as internal flow. So we already discussed the internal flow theory in the second part of fluid dynamics, that is laminar flow. Now, in this particular session, uh, in internal flow or topic, we will mainly focus on the turbulent flow analysis. So a pipe a is a closed conduit, which is used for carrying fluids under pressure. <clears throat> As the pipe carry fluids under pressure, the pipes always run full. There will always be some loss of energy in the direction of flow, which however depends on the type of flow, the flow of fluid in a pipe, maybe either laminar or turbulent. So uh, whenever we do the pipe uh, analysis of fluid, analysis of flow through the pipe. First of all, we have to recognize the type of flow because <clears throat> analysis means application of the various expressions for calculation of flow parameters. So it is very much essential to recognize the type of flow. If the flow is laminar, we have to use the expressions what we have discussed in previous unit uh, under laminar flow section. If the flow is turbulent, uh, we have to apply the theory which we are going to study in this particular topic, internal flow. So it is very much essential to first recognize the type of flow and then we can apply the theory. Now the flow through pipe, uh, there are two possible cases of flow through pipe. On the left hand side, uh, this particular flow is also called as a flow through pipe. Right hand side, this is also called as flow through pipe. Now where this theory is applicable, Generally, this theory is applicable not in this particular case because here the pipe is not running full or the fluid in the pipeline is not pressurized fluid. So there are no losses encountered in the pipeline. So generally, this theory which we are going to learn, this is applicable for the pipe which is running full. So if the fluid is under pressure, then and then in that case, the pipe is running full. So under that circumstances, we can apply this particular theory. This theory is uh, generally applicable for various piping systems uh, or various systems where the fluid is used, either that fluid is liquid or vapor. Uh, there are various systems like various power plants are there. So where the piping arrangement is there for water circuit, refrigerant circuit, gas circuit. So various circuits are there. So in order to calculate the various losses, and in order to calculate the power required, so all these analysis is required. <clears throat> now the loss of energy in pipe, uh, when the fluid flowing through a pipe, fluid experiences some resistance due to which some of the energy of fluid is lost. And this loss of energy is classified into two, that is major energy loss and minor energy loss. Major energy loss is mainly because of friction while as minor energy loss is mainly due to change in velocity. So in major energy loss uh, due to friction it occurs, so which is generally reflected in the pressures. So when uh, the fluid is flowing through a uniform cross-section pipe, and if we measure the pressure difference across the pipeline, and if we see there is a positive pressure, that is negative pressure difference, that is P1 minus P2 is positive, or P2 minus P1 is negative, that means there is a loss of pressure occurs. That means there are losses occurred, and that loss is generally reflected in uh, that that is due to friction or due to change in velocity. Uh, that is either in magnitude or in, uh, in direction. So these losses are generally reflected in loss of energy. So major loss of energy that is the frictional energy. So kinetic energy most of the cases remains constant. It, uh, it is not reflected, in fact, at the macro level but we can easily realize from the uh, pressure, uh, from by measuring pressures, we can easily realize whether there is loss uh, happening or not. 
So the magnitude of loss is generally measured in terms of ratio. Now uh, we will see how to calculate the loss of energy to, due to friction. And whatever the derived expression that is called as a Darcy Wiesbach equation. So uh, we know that the frictional resistance offered to fluid offered to flow depends on the type of flow already we have discussed. On the basis of experimental observations, the laws of fluid friction for types of flows are as follows. For laminar flow that we already studied, or we have derived the equation that is called the Hagen Poiseuille equation or Poiseuille equation, where pressure. Uh, difference that is also called as uh, uh, frictional losses. So, which is proportional to the velocity uh, because uh, the formula, if you remember, that is for circular pipeline, it is P1 minus P2 that is equal to 32 mu V L by D square. So, only V is the variable. So, frictional losses or pressure drop is proportional to the velocity of the flow and the area of the surface in contact. So, that is. Uh, because the velocity is there means area of the surface is also important because diameter is also there. So uh, this is for laminar flow. For turbulent flow, already we have uh, studied uh, turbulent flow. Turbulent flow, there is no analytical relations available. So most of the relations are based on the experimental things. But from analytical, uh, it is found that frictional resistance is proportional to V raised to M, that is velocity raised to M where n varies from 1.72 to 2 uh, uh, r of the surface in contact. So n value, this is obtained uh, using a Reynolds separatist. Reynolds has performed uh, the experiments on various number of fluids uh, for turbulent flow. And he found that the value of n it, uh, generally varies from 1.72 to 2. But we generally consider as 2 for analytical relations. Now, uh, Fraude conducted a series of experiments to investigate the frictional resistance offered to the flowing water by different surfaces. And from the result of these experiments, he derived the following conclusions. In steady, uniform, turbulent, incompressible flow in conduit of constant cross-section, wall shear stress varies about proportional to the square of the velocities. So this is the expression which is obtained uh, using the experimental relation as well. Uh, some dimension analysis technique is also used to uh, derive the functional relationship between the frictional resistances and the other parameters. Now it is found that uh, the frictional resistance that is shear stress, that is wall shear stress intensity, that is equal to F dash rho V square by two. So where F dash is the dimensionless coefficient, so it is also called as a coefficient of friction. Uh, secondly, the frictional resistance means it is given by the formula that is tau is equal to, sorry, frictional resistance Fd is equal to, that is shear stress into circumferential area, that is tau into P into L. So tau is F dash rho V square by 2, P is the circumference that is pi D into L. So this is the frictional resistance formula. So uh, this resistance formula is generally used for when the fluid uh, or the, when the fluid flow is turbulent. Now uh, we consider a horizontal pipe section uh, A, uh, or we can say horizontal pipe sec uh, cross section, that is the cross section of the pipeline is A, carrying a fluid with a mean velocity V. Let one and two be the two sections of the pipe, L distance apart, where the pressure intensities be P1 and P2 respectively. Uh, then uh, this is a pipe section where the flow is essentially a turbulent, we can say. So the diameter is D, its length we are considering L. Now the pipe is horizontal and uh, the pipe section is also uniform. So if there is pressure difference found across the section one and two, that means P2 is less than P1, or P1 is greater than P2. Then that pressure difference is, or that pressure energy is consumed to overcome the friction that is offered by the pipe, uh, offered by the fluid, or the, the friction between the fluid and the pipe wall, or the friction between uh, the fluid layers. 
Now here we are considering the turbulent flow because already we have discussed that is for laminar flow. Uh, the, we have analyzed. Here we are considering the turbulent flow. So according to Bernoulli's equation uh, for section one and two, we have the loss of energy. So if we apply the Bernoulli's equation, so V1 by gamma plus V1 square by twice G plus Z1, that is equal to P2 by gamma plus V2 square by twice G plus Z2. Now in this case, V1 is equal to V2, Z1 is equal to Z2 plus HF that we consider that is for head loss. So only P1 and P2, they are variable under these circumstances because as the pipe section is uniform, V1, V2s are uh, const uh, same. Z1, Z2 are same because the pipe is horizontal. This only variable that is P1 minus P2 or that we can say P1 by gamma minus P2 by gamma that is equal to HF. So if we apply Bernoulli's equation, that is modified Bernoulli's equation, we can say across section one and two, we can arrive this equation directly. That is loss of head HF that is equal to P1 minus P2 by gamma. This is our aim. We have to derive this expression of HF. Further, uh, let F dash be the frictional resistance per unit area at unit velocity. Then the frictional resistance uh, uh, the pressure, uh, the uh, sorry, uh, the pressure forces. At the now we analyze the forces here. Now we can apply the Newton's second law of motion. So the forces acting on this control element, if we consider the pressure forces at section one and two, which are P one into A and P two into A respectively. Then resolving all forces horizontally, we have three forces, that is two pressure forces and one frictional resistance, which uh, acts opposite to the direction of flow. So P1 A, that is pressure acting on left face, which is acting towards right, and other two forces, they are acting towards left. So P2 into A plus frictional resistance. Now, uh, if we add the frictional resistance formula, uh, that is F dash rho V square by two, IDL. Uh, so this is a frictional resistance. So uh, just the printing mistake here. That is uh, that frictional resistance is small f. That is resistance per unit area. It's not a f dash. So that is a printing mistake here. So uh, uh, in fact, uh, you ignore this particular line. So frictional resistance. So this is the expression of frictional resistance that we have discussed in previous slide. So according to a Froude. Uh, relation. So F dash, uh, this is a uh, shear, wall shear stress into the area. Now, if we divide both sides by specific weight of the flowing fluid, so then P1 minus P2 by gamma, that is equal to uh, A, we can take this side. So that is F dash rho uh, divided by gamma into rho G. Rho G, inst instead of rho, we can put rho G. Here it is rho. That is V square, that is uh, pi DL and uh, divided by area. So this area we can call it at pi by 4 D square. So some common terms we can eliminate. Pi pi get cancelled, 1 D get cancelled, rho rho get cancelled. So instead of gamma, we can put rho G. So that's why this rho 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 get, get cancelled. So only G is remaining. And uh, this, this is called as HF from this relation. So HF is equal to, if we rearrange this is four F dash L V square, that is divided by two G and D. That is two G D. Uh, or we can say that is HF is equal to F L V square by twice G D, where F, is known as a darcy Wisbach coefficient or friction factor, and which is generally equal to uh, F, but means if we substitute F is equal to four F dash, then the relation becomes HF is equal to FLV square by YG. Now the above equation is known as darcy Wisbach equation. Now there are some confusions uh, in various books that uh, some books, the formula, this formula is used. 
some book this formula is used so now remember when to use this formula when to use this formula so generally you stick with these expressions uh, uh, there are two values of f so one is f and second is f dash so f is friction factor and f dash is coefficient of friction f is friction factor it is also called as the darcy wisbach coefficient because this is a substitution so most of the numerical if uh, uh, maybe in the problem statement uh, there are some confusions uh, so in the problem statement if the f value that is frictional factor value if it is point not not something then it is not f it is actually f dash so you consider this expression or you convert uh, that f you calculate f that is equal to 4 times f dash so uh, especially uh, rajput that is in rajput book fluid mechanics by rajput uh, they have used this formula extensively but if the formula is but uh, most of the standard books this formula is used even in international books also hf is equal to fl v square by twice g so in the case f value if generally consider point not something or point not uh, uh, point something so if such values are there then we can use this expression so again we have to uh, use some common sense here why which expressions to be used uh, so again i uh, repeat and the value of friction factor is point not not something then it is a f dash value so from f dash we have to calculate the value of f that is by multiplying four and if the friction factor if it is given in point not something or point something then it is obviously a darcy which batch coefficient of friction factor so this is the equation which is used for calculating the frictional head we can say uh, uh, under which circumstances when the flow is turbulent so most of the practically occurrence flows are turbulent so uh, generally we can use this particular equation that is for laminar flow only one substitution is there that is this is f by 64 uh, then we can use uh, r is equal to f by 64 in that case we can use the friction factor as uh, same formula we can use so, or we can say this is the most generalized formula even if we know the relation of f then also we can calculate uh, for laminar flow uh, then we can use this formula for laminar flow as well so this is about the darcy batch equation so we'll take quickly uh, go through one numerical in darcy batch equation so water is to be supplied to the inhabitants of a college campus through a supply main the following data is given so consider this as a practical example and most of the practical situations you can find in this and where you can collect the information and you can calculate the required parameters now, uh, this is again related with the college because college term is there, so college campus. The following data is used. So distance of the reservoir from the campus. So there is a reservoir which is three kilometer away from the campus. Number of inhabitants uh, in the college that is 4,000. Consumption of water per day of each habitant is also given. So every person utilize utilizes 180 liters the loss of head due to friction is given that is 18 meter coefficient of friction for the pipe f is equal to 0. 0.007 now here it is 0.007 I mean this is not a f value it is actually f dash value so while considering uh, this expression so we have to calculate f that is friction factor that is equal to coefficient of friction into 4 now, if half of the daily supply is pumped in eight hours, so pumping system is used, and uh, whatever the supply required, if uh, means if half of that supply, the pumping is used. So pumping, we need to use that pump for eight hours per day. So what should be the size of the supply main? So what is the diameter of the supply main? So that is the question. Is the dairy there is a 16 hours pumping is required to meet the requirement that is uh, 4000 into 180 liters? 
Now this is a practical oriented problems and I, only we have used that formula of friction factor is loss of head due to friction that is 18 meter which is given. So first of all, we'll write the given quantities. Now L is given length, number of inhabitants 4,000, consumption per day uh, per habitant we converted into meter cube. That is one liter or one meter cube that is equal to 10 to, 10 to minus three liters. Uh, sorry, thousand liter. One meter cube is thousand liters. So, so liter to meter cube we divide by thousand. Then the uh, total supply per day that is four thousand into point eighty. That is seventy two meter. So this is the total supply per day. So that means the total volume is given. Now, in this case, we have to calculate the diameter uh, and uh, in order to calculate the diameter, the information is given. So again, in this case, HF value is also given that is 18 meter head loss due to friction. So F is equal to four times F dash, that is 0.028. Uh, since half of the supply, this is a daily supply, since half of this supply is to be pumped in eight hours, uh, therefore, the maximum flow for which the pipe is to be designed to maintain the flow rate. So, flow rate we can calculate by using this information. Uh, that is equal to Q is equal to 720 divided by 2 into 8 into 3600. So, Q comes around this. So, diameter of the supply line D we can calculate by using the expression because Q known to us, that is FLV square by YGV. So FL, instead of V, we can write Q by A. So it is Q square upon pi by four D square bracket square in QGV. So only unknown in this expression, that is D. By putting all the values, we can calculate D, that is diameter of the pipe, that is 142, or we can say 0.4143 meter. A quite practical oriented problem. We can design a pipe pipeline also using this theory. So this is the first application we have seen here with the help of this practical example. So that's it from the session. At the end of this session, uh, you will be you will be able to describe the losses occurred in the pipes. So which losses are there? Major losses, minor losses, causes of these losses. Uh, you will be able to derive an expression for calculating the losses due to friction. That the name of the equation is Darcy Vigilance equation. Or also, we'll be able to calculate the frictional losses in various piping systems. That's it from this particular lecture. Thank you very much.